Second jump, right one. The Ulster Hall, a venue of great history, and more tonight. It's year zero for Barry McGuigan as a promoter and for Carl Frampton as a bill topper. And it all starts here. Carl Frampton actually looks as if he's in the Ukrainian national colours in his shorts against the man in black, Yuri Foranen, who three times has tried for the European featherweight title, one draw against Cyril Thomas in San Quentin in uh, northeast France in 06 and then defeats at the hands of Nicky Cook and the Italian Alberto Savida. Big night for Frampton and a night to get some big hits in and he's attempting already. Scott Quigg and Joe Murray have got the better of Foreman in the past 12 months in Britain, in Wigan and Dagenham, respectively. And he's the man who almost derailed, temporarily at least, the Bernard Dunn juggernaut back in 2005, late on in that fight in the 10th round. What are you expecting tonight then, Mr Hawkins? Uh, you mentioned Bernard Dunn, the Dunn, Bernard Dunn fight, uh, and he did almost take Bernard out in round 10, but I must say that Bernard give him a boxing lesson up to the round 10 and I expect Frampton to do the same in the early rounds. Uh, it's, I'm really looking forward to this fight. I think Frampton has all the tools to look after Varnan, but if he's still there after four or five, we're in for a cracking evening. He has the next 12, 18 months mapped out in front of him. Frampton, if things go well this evening, it's a massive test for him, but Barry McGuigan doesn't want to make life difficult for him. Wants him to put on a show against a very difficult opponent, which Voronin definitely is. Only has uh, half an inch on Frampton. And they weighed in almost the same. Voronin needing a, a second attempt to reach the 8 stone 12. And Frampton trying to lay into him in the corner early on in this first round. Decent start. Decent start. It's always going to be awkward. Foreign and uh, he's tough and rough and uh, not a, not an easy guy to work out in the early rounds. But he took a good left hook and he's still there. And young know, Frampton is, looks very, very, very snappy. Foreign did aim a couple of good shots to the body and Frampton responding in decent kind and a good left to the head also. And now a right to the body from Frampton. And Vaughan and finding himself just holding on. Literally at the end of this round one. What a solid start that was. And the Ulster Hall. Frampton's opening round was solid. Solid and secure opening round for Carl Frampton against Yuri Vornan. With action like this. Second round of eight in this super bantamweight contest. Carl Frampton facing Yuri Vornan. At the Ulster Hall. Cornyn's time to try and respond. He had uh, that golden year in 06 and 07 when he fought five times for belts. One draw was the best he could do. And a couple of quick little rabbit punches with the right from Frampton had a little effect on Cornyn, who was in the ascendancy, was rising up the ranks very well after that done fight at the... National Stadium when Bernard was establishing himself back at home and getting into the national psyche again, which is what Carl Frampton is aiming to do here at Belfast and has helped it along the way with a good right there. And another, and Bernard wobbling. But Frampton was too far away to take advantage. Now he is in round two here, and Bernard is in trouble. And Frampton is taking him with another right. He's doing a very good job on the man from the Ukraine so far. 
Voron Ennis lost his last two. Brighton's coming in and in very well here. And the referee looking to divide. This is brilliant stuff from Rob Crampton and he's looking to go in for the kill here again. Oh, fantastic, fantastic bit of punching power. He looks very solid. Every shot he's thrown, they're hurting. Uh, he's leading well with the left hook. I'd like to see him following the right hand behind the left hook. And he's had Bornan in all sorts of trouble. Here he goes again on Bornan, and Bornan looks like a tree about to fall. He's hovering right in front of us in big trouble. Frampton looking to pick him off here, and maybe one good punch at the end of a solid combination can certainly do that. Carl Frampton has come to life here on home soil at the Ulster Hall. He's got Bornan in big trouble. to the side and we will box on but Frampton has got for in massive trouble here is he ready to end it oh what a great right hand from Frampton right on the nail a uh, great great punch and Vernon is in big trouble he did well the last this round out well I don't think Vernon's had a fight like this in a long time he was knocked out in the sixth just uh, nine months ago at the Robin Park Centre in Wigan at the hands of Scott Quigg, who's one of those big candidates, uh, super bantamweight, along with Frampton, who's trying to pull his way up the pecking order among so many brilliant players. What a round that was for Kyle Frampton. The Jackal Frampton in tremendous, powerful form in that second round. This is the knockdown coming up, and a great red hook, red on the nail, and down he went, but he's up on his feet again, but my must say, Frampton is looking very, very solid. The man from Odessa wasn't down for long, but that's a solid right to the body of Foran in here, and he's trying to follow it up. He's got him firmly against the ropes here. Is he going in to try and finish it off, Frampton? He looks in terrific form against Vorinen. That's another excellent right which the Ukrainian has responded very well to. But if he keeps going like this, how long can the fight last? Frampton's had a brilliant opening two and a bit rounds. Vorinen knew he was coming into the lines then. He's under big pressure here. Another couple of good low body shots from Frampton and Kenny Pringle will pull them apart again it's scheduled for eight rounds in two of his last five fights Fornan has been stopped one of those surprisingly in the third round in the hands of Roman Horayan back home in Kiev at the start of 2009, it was St. Patrick's Week. Is there an omen in that? Vornan looks very, very shaken and shaking. Yeah, a great variety of punches from, from Frampton. Left hook leads, right hook leads, and like to just bring in the uppercut, and I think he could take Vornan out. He's connecting very well, is Frampton. Well, it was a supreme test of his abilities, a very strong match made against the man who was top of the tree four years ago, considered good enough to have three attempts at the European title in the 06-07 era. Some great, strong sparring for Frampton in the past few weeks. 25 rounds with David Oliver Joyce, who he beat for the Irish Amateur Featherweight title in 09, just before going pro. He's looking a good pro here. 30 rounds with John Simpson. So far, just under a full three with Yuri Vorin. Also, Junior Saeed, six foot one, a good solid week in London. A hundred rounds of sparring, and it's standing to Frampton here. He looks so shy and clinical and secure, and he's got Vorin in big trouble again. And the 23-year-old is getting a big score for youth here. One or two more punches could finish it in Frampton's favour but he wasn't quite able at that time, or perhaps willing, to finish it. 
as we head towards the end of the third. That's a brilliant left by Frantic. Looking so sharp, so secure, so over. Boronen out to the count. Carl Frampton, home soil, three rounds. Thank you very much. What an impressive performance by Carl Frampton. You know, Boronen is no one's fool. I must say he didn't look sharp tonight, but he wouldn't have, no one would look sharp tonight against Carl Frampton. He had every punch in the book, a great variety of punches, and what an impressive performance. Thank you very much indeed. That was a brilliant performance. He had him down, counted in the second round, but it all finishes here in round three. Uh, well, the referee jumped in. Warren is complaining, but he couldn't have lasted much longer. The talk is over. It's time for the action. It's full set up there. Twice a European bronze medalist. Just indeed as one of our panelists, Nick Darling, was twice a European medalist. I think Bucharest and Madrid. But this is Limerick tonight. And straight away, Kessie jumps out of his corner. And that, I suppose, is fairly predictable. Kessie, in case you didn't know already, a southpaw. This is the makings of an all-action fight, a really all-action fight. They say styles make fights, well, this is the contrast in styles. When you say that Highland is the boxer and Casey the fighter, that does scant justice to both men in the other direction because Highland too can carry a punch and Willie can box. Thirty days yet, but Casey hasn't come out, you know, throwing big wild bombs or big left hooks. He, he's actually boxing more than I've ever seen him boxing before, you know, and he's sinking here. But that young guy Hedges, and he's got a good left hook to the body. I mean, this will be probably Hedges' best punch to be throwing, and that's what a what a southpaw is open for, and a good solid left hook under the under what the short rim. What an opening round! It's fantastic already. I mean, the action is brilliant. Good. Good shots been thrown by both men, and there's still a minute and 40 to go in the round. With that left hook going into the body again from Highland, it's a good punch now. That was a nice good straight one too that Highland also caught Casey with they just landed a bang on target. Really only two years of pros. This only is an 11th fight for many. One in Limerick, three in Dublin, one in Cork, one in Killarney, one in Toronto. And then those famous three in the York Hall on the 29th of May, 2010. That's the night he won the prize for him. You see, what either fighter doesn't want to do here is to get wide. You see, when you get wide, you make mistakes and you leave yourself wide open. And whoever leaves themselves too wide open can get tagged with a big left or a big right. So they have to keep their composure. And Hedges is doing lovely stuff here, boxing to the head and to the body, and so is Casey. This at the minute, Jimmy, is a toss-up. But it's only the first round. Well, it's like our front room, but right now there's nothing sure in it. It was a difficult one to free fight call, and even after the evidence of a minute and a or two and a half minutes, it's still difficult to call. Highland is able to put ones, twos and threes together. Last ten seconds of the run, and this has been one really very, very good run. Great uppercut there from Casey, and that light of the crowd, and that's been as good a first run as you could possibly see in a title fight any place, anywhere. Yep, fantastic stuff here from both fighters. They both come out, but Casey didn't come out wildly. He's fighting a thinking man's fight, he's picking his shots and he's looking at what he's doing. He's not throwing big, wide, sweeping right hands or left hooks. It's very, very, very good stuff from Casey. He's surprising me, but it's also good stuff from Young Highland, who's boxing very well and putting some very good combinations together, especially that left hook to the short rim. It's a devastating punch, and when it lands, it causes you all kinds of problems. That man in 
the ring with him there is Patrick Highland, his father. Great boxing man who went been right through the amateurs with his three sons. Now proud he must be tonight. Phil Sutliff is in the corner there, urging on the crowd not to need much encouragement. As we come up for round two, scheduled for 12, already it's been a cracker. See how neat and tidy the punching the island is. He can pick shots well. And this is one thing Willie doesn't intend to do, to give him time to compose himself. The right hand came through well there from Casey. Two good, solid body shots there from Casey. Powerful stuff. I can tell you, Jim, you see for 10 fights, he's a very, he looks like a very, very experienced fighter, Casey. He, he looks like, like he's an established pro. For somebody having so few fights, like 10 fights, you think he would have 25 or 30 fights away. He's performing in the way he's conducting himself in the ring. But sure, he's not novice like, that's for certain. He's a fighter. Dave by McCauley could put his finger absolutely on it. There's nothing novice at all about Willie Casey, both in his defence, in his attack, and in the way he's carried himself into this fight against the very composed, accurate and skillful Highland. Really good contest, this one, for the Championship of Europe. This could come right down to Jimmy, whatever one of these guys has trained the hardest and sacrificed in the gym, because this is a really fast uh, fought pace here and you just can't continue that for 12 rounds so whatever person has put it in the gym and trained his ass off and, and, and left nothing to, to chance that's a guy looking at it right now who's got the best chance of winning this European title no less exchanging punches one for one what's the Highland left hand it's a good left hand he takes a right hand on the left arm each in turn having a little flurry See, what Head is doing is right now, he's getting involved in a brawl. He's a boxer, he's not a fighter, so he wants to get on his bike and move. What he's doing now, he's sitting Willie Casey right down to the ground. He's coming in close, and he's Willie Casey just loving this, because he can let the punches go from every angle, and Head is standing right in front of him. Even though he's well covered up, he's still shifting some punches here, and he wants to get on his bike and do what he does best, and that is box. Yes, at distance. That's would appear to be the best method for Paulie Highland. Good exchange, hooks, uppercuts, head punches, body punches. This is a little of everything. Oh, oh. a left hook from Highland, a really good left hook to the head, and then tried one to the body, and back comes Casey with his glory. If you're looking for big time stuff, this is big time stuff. And the University of Limerick. Cracking, absolutely cracking European title fight. Another terrific run from two really creditable fighters. The European Championship has come to Ireland, and for the first time, two Irishmen are going hell for leather for it. Great punching, great skill from both men. Dave, this is a cracker. Yeah. First class, look, you can see the quality of the punches here. They're in close, they're, they're, they're fighting and they're giving their all. But Hayden's a boxer, so what he wants to do, if I was in his corner right now, I'd saying, listen, get on your bike, box and move, throw the hard punches, put power behind it, but box and move, because when you get in close, you're sitting Willie Casey. This is, this, is, this is what he wants. He wants you in there. He wants you just to, to entice you into to, to the lion's den. And that's what Hayden's doing right now. He's doing well right now, but... He could do things a wee bit better and a wee bit easier for himself if he was to get on his bike and box. Round three. First Paul Casey in the black trunks and wearing the, the blue and very dark navy, the Dublin colours, Paulie Hyland. I check with the man himself if Paulie's right. And Paulie it is. His uncle is Paul, so it makes it easier for the family of one is Paul and one is Paulie. So it's not being too familiar with him calling Paulie. Just to clear that up. Stop, stop, 
The thing that's uh, astonishing, and Dave Boy McCauley has took notice of it, is that Willie Casey is tonight only in his 11th fight. And in fact, this round he's boxing now is only the 47th round of his professional career. And yet, look at him. Look at the way he's set up his stance, his posture, his punching. It's hard to believe. Yeah, he's, he's a true pro in, in every sense of the world. But uh, what Hayden wants to do here, that if I was, uh, uh, I said this, what Hayden wants to do, you have to forget about the crowd. You have to do what you do best, and that's box. And what he's not doing is right now, Hayden, is letting that left hook go to the body as often as what he should be, because he's not doing his normal thing, which is on his bike and move around, take his shots, move in, move out and away, and let that left hook go to the body, because that's the one that creates a lot of damage and wears your opponent down. But what he's doing is right now, he's fighting the fight that Casey wants, because Casey doesn't have to go looking for him, because he's right there in front of him. Yes, he doesn't have to look for him at all. Is that left hand going into the body again from Ireland is probably his best punch. And his defence is good, Toby. He's done the last four or five punches that Casey has thrown. Every one of them was taken in the arms and under gloves by Tyler. And the last one got through. And listen to the crowd here in this magnificent arena. They're going toddy for Big Bang. Inside the last minute of the third. You see, what Hayden should be doing right now is to be on that bike and boxing, get that jab going, let the right hands go, the left hook go, you know, because this is what he has to do. You know, like, he's there in the ropes, and, and, and to, in, my, in my eyes, this is all to please the crowd. You want to forget about the crowd, but then put the crowd behind you and do what you do best at this. Normally, when you see Paul ahead of his box, he's on his toes, jabs out, left hooks go to the body, under the head. I haven't seen a big lot of that from the, from the start of this fight because he wants to fight, he wasn't involved in this brawl. He wants to show that he can fight just as Casey can, but at least Casey's boxing the tight tonight. And a very good third round, and Casey's round. He's so confident now, he's just blowing a kiss to somebody in the audience. To whom? How do I know? Because there, there must be. Oh, there's 500 people here. See, obviously supporting Big Bang. Great stuff here from both fighters again, but Hayden gets caught when he's inside, and if he did what he, what he does best, as I've been saying, is box. But you can box and fight, you just don't have to be on, on your bike all the time. The good stiff jabs, good solid one, two, bang the left hook to the body, and then move. Don't stay there and admire the work that you've just done. Get on your bike and do a move. All the time. Easy on this, easy on this. And Ryan also there in the corner with Polly Highland. Phil Sutcliffe was Willie Casey. Round four. Round four, scheduled for 12. One quarter way gone. Assuming a very wide stance at the top of this round. I'll tell you what uh, Hayden's doing very, very, which is very dangerous. See that left hand? That left hand's down in where his, where his waistband is. And uh, if, if, if Casey gets that right hook off and it goes goes according to plan, if that lands, it'll do a bit of damage because Hayden's hand is right down level with his waistband, which is in the, which is in the wrong place entirely. Cooler started this round though by Paulie Harlan. You see, this is what Hayden should be doing in and out move, box and move. Like, you don't have to be on the retreat all the time. Go forward, throw two or three punches, then move away. But he's doing that a wee bit more now, and he's moving a wee bit more now, but he's been a wee bit negative in this round. He's not doing the same punches. Once he gets him, go move, get out of the way. When he stands, he gets tagged like, like what's happening right now. I know the, the punches aren't landing on the target. There's still, you have, it makes you think and it wears you down. Hook 
both hands. An uppercut with his right hand. A left hook to the head. And another left hook to the head. I don't know what's going through young Henry's mind here. He's not doing what he normally does do, and that's box and move. He's just staying here, and he's getting tight, and he's getting broken down here. Because those are pretty powerful punches going in there from Casey. And what they'll do is, they'll wear Henry down. They'll, they'll obviously take their toll on Casey also. And the referee intervenes. And Willie Casey. Big bang Willie. Has done it. Holly Haaland took this fight at a fortnight's notice and it was supposed to be Kiko Martinez boxing for this title. Fantastic, incredible atmosphere. Casey went at it. Unbelievable percentage of punches from Casey. And I'll tell you something. He's standing in that ring just above me now. I hope his foot, his footwork is good and he doesn't fall on top of me. Big Bang has done it, and I'll tell you one thing here. You could measure the atmosphere on the Richter scale in Limerick. Willie Casey is the champion of Europe. Round one. Well, the Iron Man returns to the ring. Martin Rogan back inside the ropes a year to the day since his last fight against Sam Sexton at the Odyssey Arena in Belfast. He's back after recovering from a neck injury which threatened his career. Boy, is he back. Beginning to start here, really on the front foot. And already, Arin Chef from Bulgaria has been bottled up in the corner. Martin Rogan will be a man on a mission here tonight. Six rounds. This heavyweight contest is scheduled to go. But as I say, it looks like Rogan wants to get an early night here. It's ahead, it's on. Rogan in the gold shorts, well known as Iron Man after that neck injury. He had a, a titanium plate inserted in his neck. Man made of uh, Belfast steel now. Plenty of steel and resolve. Marinchev already knows he's going to be in for a very busy evening here, Dave. Yeah, those are really good solid body oh. shots that uh, Rogan's doing, and they're real good tight ones. And uh, you can tell there, Marinchev, he grabbed on, or he moved in and grabbed on to Rogan, you to stop him. You know, from throwing uh, more body shots there, but you can tell there's a bit of power there, and uh, he's hurting Marinchev at this early stage of the fight. Well, Rogan, he's such a great character. Don't do that, shit. Belfast sure. boy. Let's go. A warning there from referee Emil Seat for uh, Yaro Marinchev. Back down to the ropes. Watch your head. Again. Watch your head. Rogan, of course, who shot to fame. By winning the prize fighter series. Watch your head. Let's go. Box. Paving the way, I suppose, really for the likes of Willie Casey to follow suit. And then, of course, was the famous duel with Audrey Harrison. Causing a massive upset back in 2008. And then became Commonwealth oh. champion. With victory over Matt Skelton. Stop. And that injury clearly set back to his on, box. blossoming on, career. Box. He's now 39 years of age. The time not exactly on his side, but he's determined to go as far as he can in the game. You see, the, the referee says to Marin Schechter, look, you're going to box because he's not trying here. Uh, he's being hurt, you know, uh, like uh, Rogan's throwing some good solid shots. But what Rogan wants to do here, the fact that he hasn't been in the ring in nearly a year or a year, uh, he wants to take his time here, He'll try and get yeah, some rounds right. under his belt because he's fighting next month. Man, let him go. He wants to try and get some uh, rounds under his belt here. Oh, that's a good cracking left hook to the body there. Well, he may not get too many more rounds under his belt Four. here because Marinchev is taking account here Six. from referee Emil T. Seven. Eight. Well, there may be an element of Nine. rustiness, but Marinchev is Ten. struggling to get back to his feet, and he won't make it, and he hasn't made it, and it's a victory in the first round here. What a return for Martin Rogan, the Iron Man doing the business here in Limerick tonight. He is a, a big traveling support with him, and he has done the business in some style inside the opening round here. Marinchev down to the deck, clearly winded at the worst for wear, and Rogan, well, what a return to the ring.